In several hours, Sergei is going to change his service coat to a regular sports jacket. But at the time of Trawler's departure, Captain has to be all dressed up. Cap's up there. I'm here. What's this? Change your clothes. You're embarrassing us. Oops, sorry. Hi there. Hello. That's on record. Hi. Hi, Oleg. So here I have the papers, I see. It's enough to enter a port. I mean, not Terebrika, but Murmansk, where everyone can go home. And in just two days, they meet like they've been away for a century. This is to prevent it from falling when the ship's rolling. Leave the spring line and cast off the rest. When I'm asked who my husband is, I say he goes to sea, and it's something, you know? Although in Murmansk the status of sailors went down, still it's a men-only job. It's not like being a salesman in a store. Yulia, the wife of deckhand Pyotr Polenis, drives her husband right up to the ladder. With the imminent parting, every minute spent together is precious. Bye. For fishermen, long farewells are not about lyrics. It's just easier to fight with the element and to deal with the despair of monotonous days when you know that somebody's waiting for you, when your last minutes on land were filled with warmth. There are physical factors and there's also morale. If we talk about physical ones, it's mostly lack of sleep. We don't get enough time to rest when there's a lot of fish. And morale? When you're at sea for a long time, you really get homesick. How long will they stay apart? Nobody knows. Maybe one month, maybe two. Rosioki's crew is going to sail the sea expanses in search for cod and haddock. These northern fishes are the most valuable here. Every person working in the Murmansk Coast Guard has a sea background. That's why formal communications in the control room occasionally have a touch of personal concern. Rosioki to Murmansk 32. <clears throat> yes, Murmansk 32. Rosioki here. How are things with authorities? Border closed? Yes, authorities will leave the vessel in five minutes. We are ready to depart. Please send dockers for unmooring. Okay, copy that. Sending dockers. All the best. Have a good fishing. Thanks, bye. Full speed ahead. So here we have, how's that? Full speed ahead, come on. Godspeed. kilometers from Armansk, hundreds of miles covered to no purpose. Rosioki has been looking for fish in the Barents Sea for three days, but the trawler's cargo hold is still empty. The crew's morale is in congruence with the situation. Stop! Stop! And on top of that, the harsh nature of the Arctic is making itself felt. A Force 5 storm worked up its rage. Icy, bone-piercing wind is blowing punch in the back hard. Waves are flinging the 30-meter vessel back and forth like a toy. Hey! 
Where are you dragging it? Look at me! The captain's on the bridge. His stare is flipping all the time between the screens and the waves in front of the trawler. It's five in the morning, not much sleep. Four hours is a luxury. The boat is small. Everyone's dealing with fish, and I'm here all the time. Roads and trips we go. The captain is 50 years old. 32 of them he spent at sea. In that time, he's seen it all, both abundant catches and empty holds. Catastrophes occurred and tragedies unfolded in front of his eyes. He too had to deal with many predicaments, but the fight with the element always ended with him on the winning side. He earned a long-standing reputation of a cool-headed sea dog. But as a boy, his dreams were not so much about deep waters as about the sky. I wanted to study in the Barnal Higher Military Aviation School to become a fighter pilot. But since I don't have the nasal septum, I was told that I'm not eligible for aviation. I can only go to infantry or fleet. We had offers from maritime colleges of Nakhotka, Kamchatka, Vladivostok, St. Petersburg, and Sakhalin, five altogether. And when me and my mates were on the Ruski island at the Far East, we were like, shall we go to Nakhotka? Sure, why not? So that's how my maritime life started. The most dangerous and the most mundane thing for fishermen is a storm. The captain doesn't keep any seashells at home anymore. Fishermen say that it's bad luck. You might never return back on the shore. Lena took every single one of the seashells and threw them away. She's not superstitious, but if it makes her husband feel safer, she's not going to protest against it. Once again, the trawl is being pulled up on the main deck. Everyone is watching the net as it emerges from the deep waters with genuine interest. At this minute, fishermen look much like the miners looking for gold. It happens all the time. You run around for one, two, three days with no result. You know the fish is close, but you can't pin it down. But then we find it anyway. It's in our, our blood. Not a hint of joy on the faces. The trawl came up with barely a quarter of its capacity. At the most, it's two tons of fish, while the goal is seven. Luckily, there are several more days of fishing. Enough, Sanya. Help Nikolaevich with the sacks. As soon as the trawl is emptied of the fish, it's thrown back into the sea. Rosiyoki's catch leaves much to be desired. Sergei Gorbachev makes contact with captains of the fishing vessels sailing nearby. Hello, Uncle Sasha. Pick up the phone. Hello, good morning, Sergey. What did you want? I wanted to know your catch from the last night. We didn't get much. The end product is about two tons. But the fish is small. Again. Yesterday we got three purses of cod, 120 or 110 meters. I'm freaking out already. Basically no fishing, no haddock. Where did it go? I have no idea. That's it. It's beyond me. Captains are competing against each other, but here at the open sea, survival depends on mutual support. That's why captains share the best fishing spots. Listen, and right now, do you get any readings? No, Sergey, nothing. Maybe just a few scattered ones. I heard Angkor was prowling around there. But Nerpa pulled up a lot. Aliut was also prowling there, but then Arkasha ran off to the top of the fifth. He said it's also haddock, but bycatch makes it fussy. So he ran off. And why would he fly to the other end of the world, not capable of talking? If he'd have asked me, I'd say that 10 miles to the south, you can get 600 kilos of flatfish. The last trawl brought even 800 kilos. 
The fish cannot be stored on the ship for more than seven days. From the moment the first trawl comes up, there's only one week to fill the cargo holds, return to the shore, and sell the catch. A person shows his real worth when things get rough. And at sea, things are rough for everyone. I don't dream of fish. I do dream of vessel repairs, though. Yes, vessel repairs. And sometimes I even talk in my sleep. So in the morning, my wife would say, I guess you were repairing something in your sleep again because you were shouting a lot. The lower deck is where the fish is being cleaned or gutted. It's the main job on the vessel. Everybody participates in this dirty conveyor regardless of marine hierarchy. Everybody except for the captain. Let's go! Let's go! Bring it on! Four movements. Just four movements. This is how I do it. I take it like this. Two fingers in its eyes, one under the chin. First this movement, second cut it off, three and four, that's it. When we are swamped, of course, I work here. It's good fish. On big vessels, it's not so very common when the crew is big. But here, here everybody is a fish processing worker. When Things get really crazy. That's how it is. From the first engineer to the first mate, everybody does the gutting. I've never seen the process organized like that, to be honest. You know, gutting like this with a knife, couldn't imagine. But the fish is always fresh, so it's actually good. You all have to trial and quickly process it, so it's not lying around for days. It happens in a moment, means quality, and the taste of the fish is naturally totally different. Hard and exhaustingly tedious labor gutting for 18 hours at a time. The shift continues until all the fish is gone. For fish to stay fresh, it has to be quickly gutted, covered with ice, processed. Then you can have a tea break. Of course it's hard work, who would argue? But it needs to be done, not much choice. You know, People have to eat nice, tasty fish, am I right? Next to the ship, seagulls and cormorants are having a feast. Waste products from the fishing conveyor are thrown into the sea and flocks of birds swoop down on it. But in the caboose, pots and frying pans are as empty as it can get. The cook had worked a 10-hour gutting shift and now he's sleeping. The captain is reduced to eating instant noodles. No, he's resting now. What time is it? He'll wake up at 8, cook lunch by 12, and then work the fish. So we stick to noodle bricks for now. Our cook cannot always prepare food. Sometimes the ship's rolling, for example. So. You sit down, eat quickly, and keep going. How was the night fishing? Not very good. We got two. Two tons? Yes, pulled up two tons. We'll set the trawl again now. The first mate will set it, and we'll keep fighting. Good morning, Sergey. Good afternoon already. On a morning comm session with the vessel sailing nearby, Gorbachev couldn't resist telling about his meal. But he didn't get any sympathy. Captains of high latitudes are famous for their ironic set of mind. Well, whenever I meet you on land, I wouldn't say you people lost a lot of weight. On the contrary, your faces are growing and growing like weeds. So don't pretend like you are starving. A new day and it's force five storm again with headwind blowing at 20 meters per second but the holds are still half empty, so the fishing continues. Once more, the trawl rattles overboard. The 
it seems that the captain never sleeps. Several years ago in the vicinity of Spitsbergen, he got relaxed for just a minute and the vessel almost upended as a result of icing up. So I wake up because of the silence. It's quiet. I jump up, rush to the bridge. My first mate was really young. So what he did is he heaved too. And the ice we had was like from this, it turned into this. The ship is healing. So I gradually start straining the angle of list. Little by little, I caught the wave. And I say, guys, just a bit left. Let's break our way out. So we broke our way out. The effort it took us. Otherwise, we would have just flipped over. If I didn't wake up, who knows how it would have ended. This is the most famous church in Murmansk. Church of the Savior on Waters. It was basically crowdfunded, built on donations. When the captain is at sea, Lena, as many other wives of Murmansk seamen, comes here. She lights up a candle before an icon. Her prayers have only one plea, for her husband to come back home safe and sound. Fishermen don't follow the time of day. Concepts like breakfast or dinner don't exist here. Every fisherman comes over to have a meal when he has some free time. Eat fast, work fast. Sleep fast. Yeah, sleep fast. And slowly go to work. Mess room is not just a dining room. It's a place for talking and hanging out. Following an unwritten marine rule, nobody leaves dirty dishes on the table. No exceptions, even for the captain. Who else? Who would wash it? Everyone's at unloading now. Who would wash it? Here, we have self-service, so to speak. No waiters. No cleaners, either. Everything by ourselves. You eat. Be so kind, clean after yourself. Otherwise, the cook will eat your head off for dirty dishes. That's how it is. Viktor Bogdanov is the master of the kitchen, one of the most important crew members. As they say, in heaven, God is a cook on board, or cook on a sail is of admiral scale. The first time he ever set sail, Victor wasn't following his heart. They drafted me, put me on a train, and sent me to the north. You can say from the backyard of Russia. The first several months, Victor was dying to return home, to get away from this rocking closed space and ice cold wind. He would have never believed that after serving in the Navy, he will end up working for 30 years in the civil fleet. I mean, nobody is forcing you or dragging you here. I came to the office. They offered me a boat. Will you go? Sure, I'll go. The papers are sorted and that's it. If you don't want to go, it's your business. This is just a financial question. Because on land, I cannot earn this amount of money anywhere. The menu is that of a regular eatery, borscht, cutlets with spaghetti, chicken with mashed potatoes, and of course, fish. No way around it when you are on a fishing trawler. Guys eat everything, literally everything. I just need 
to cook it. They like all of it. Soups, meatballs, meat soup, absolutely all of it. Fish soup too. They ask me to make a fish soup from something special, but we have only had it here. So what can you do with it? Nothing really. The entire fishing fleet is facing a sad fact. The fish have left. Where, why, for how long, where to look for it, nobody knows. Sadly, that happens. The trawler stumbling around the sea like a blind kitten. At moments like this, everybody's looking up to the captain and he's looking at the screens. Haddock mostly sticks to shoals. Yes, to shoals. Shallow waters, like 120 meters, 110, 90, 50 meters. That's her place. And cod likes bigger depth. But in summer, cod also resurfaces to 50 meters. You can detect it only by the readings. Attic. I mean, cod forms these sort of bushes like here. And haddock stays in clouds, same as capelin clouds. It shows in red, really like clouds. So the readings help you to determine whether it's cod or haddock. Intensive red on the screen represents dense schools of fish. But when the sonar stays silent, the last resort is intuition. That is the fishing instinct. Over here is where haddock is usually caught. Over here too, you can catch it. 116 meters, 115 meters. It prefers to stay on sandy soils. It likes to poke around in it to find all sorts of worms there to eat. But cod is a predator. It needs a different kind of food. We simply messed up here. We should have rolled down deeper to have a look, but we went another way. Anyway, as they say, every day is not Sunday, so now we are in a pickle. I think we'll just keep going and everything will be okay. The trial tumbles into the sea. And finally, a long desired catch. The captain makes a visual estimate. It's at least five tons. As seafarers say, fishes like a prodigal son always comes back. Yeah, that's our job. Like gambling. If you have a streak of luck, then it's okay. Sometimes a couple of hauls make all the difference. We play till the end. We never give up. A couple of hauls makes all the difference. Sonia, get that one. The fish is also struggling. This is the perfect size makes for a stable fishing. We load the bunker and set the trawl again. If it's bigger than that, we have to wait before the nets are empty, then gut the fish, and then set the trawl. We lose time. And this is the sweetest catch. Good fish, calm sea and everything. The lower deck is buzzing. It's gutting time. Carcasses are rinsed in water and stocked in refrigerator holes. This is lump fish got caught in the trawl. It's a so-called bycatch. Its flesh is not for eating, only its roe is. Flatfish, this is Atlantic wolf fish. And this striped blue one is the northern wolf fish. White stripe means cod. Black one, haddock. Production engineer Sergei Boychenko was nicknamed Fish Swat. Without looking at the scale, he can fill the box to reach the required weight. You can always just add a small one, see? Add one. Add one, that's it, the target, 23.8. So I try to find a match, that's good. Done. We have a margin of 
So if a box here says it's 45 kilos, I can make it 47.2. No, 47.3. 47.25. Or the lowest weight is 43.75. 43.75, right. The thing is that fish still has water in it and the water will seep away. The water will seep away and the weight will be smaller. Cod is more lightweight. Not exactly lightweight. I mean, it gives off more water. Right, here it is, enough. Go. Freshly refrigerated cod and haddock are valued more than the fish frozen into an ice block. That's why carcasses are buried deep in ice chips. The trawler has been at sea for five days, but so far the tour cannot be called successful. Cargo holds are not full yet. There's not enough fish. Only two days are left till the moment when the fish, even buried in ice, will start to rot. The crew grows dead silent. It's not common here to be cast down, but fishermen's faces become even gloomier. Of course the spirits get low. We went to sea to catch fish to earn money, and it's not working out. So the mood is poor. Ghastly, but everyone's making jokes. Thank God we can go home now. But I have this nagging thought. What's the point? What did we come here for? By mid-tour, many sailors have their gutting gloves torn apart. The Botswain grumbling has to reach into his coffers. Petruja, come over, take it. Okay, got it. Next one, Tikhan. Where's Tikhan? They say that the appearance of the vessel can give you an idea of the crew's Botswain, the chief manager of resources. The tougher is his character, the more order you have on board. I think it's not the professional expertise that matters, but the personality you show at sea. Professional part comes to you with time. You can learn how to do your job. What's important is to be a good person. If you are a good person, you'll be treated well, too. When a new person comes, you watch him. Say you are busting your hump and he's taking smoke breaks. He either has to smoke or to make a call. He's constantly slacking. Botswain screams, the most in the fleet, I guess. Screaming a lot. People say to me, go ahead, grumble, get it out of your system. I mean, different things happen. After a working day on land, a person returns home to his family. But at sea, you are forced to talk to the same people 24-7. It's literally an enclosed space. Three meters here, three meters there, brushing against each other. Every morning you wake up and see the same faces. It can get to you a little. Some people are short-tempered. Some people are sort of emotional. And of course, Every little thing can make people go at each other. But then it's over and they go their ways like ships at sea. The captain aims to nip all conflicts in the bud. You wait to return from sea, get on land and sort it out there. But I never really had it in my practice. As you can see, everything's calm and quiet on my ship. Nobody has issues, everybody works. This is work. We don't have time for personal stuff. You go to sea, you leave your problems out there. And this is the sea. Bell rings two times and crew members start walking onto the fish deck to set the trawl again. To be more exact, they are dragging their feet and rubbing their eyes, as this day they had only two hours of sleep. Petya is not here? Sanya, give Petya a nudge. Waves reach five meters in height. Staying on the deck is dangerous. At any moment, one of those waves can wash someone overboard. Surviving in the ice-cold water is possible for just several minutes. And finding a person in the raging sea in this period of time is next to impossible. Nobody wants to end up on the sea bottom, so fishermen watch out for each other. 
Careful. The Goliath, back down. In this weather, dangers are lurking everywhere. Several masters have been washed off with the fish. They untie the sack with the fish and the fish starts flowing out. They don't react in time and get washed off, maybe even overboard. There were cases like this on certain vessel types. The gutter is not closed. There's just a rope stretched and that's it. So they untie the fish sack, let it out a bit and make an easy knot to deal with the first batch. The knot easily gets loose just like that and the fish flows out of the sack. That's it. A man gets knocked down and thrown overboard. Anatoly is way into his 60s, but he still keeps going to sea. The seasoned sailor has an unquestionable authority among crew members. Let me. Here. If you want it to work, you have to do it with your own hands. Then the trawl will work. You have to assemble it, to check it, to fix it. It shouldn't be lopsided. On the fifth day of the tour, when the new recently bought trawl was being pulled up, a tragedy happened. It seems to have hit a big rock on the bottom. Upwards. The oil is hissing. It's been hissing a while. Unwind that one. That one. Over there, further. Come on, come on. No good. Nobody could have imagined that an absolutely new net will get out of service so soon. The captain gives an order to prepare the spare trawl and resume fishing. Sometimes on a tour, a trawl would catch hold of something on the bottom and remain there. In this case, the vessel has to turn around and start looking for it. The search can continue for several days without yielding any results. Doesn't it make you feel bad after all the work you've done on it? Big time. How can it not? It hurts. Oh well, I'm gonna go. There are some areas where you set it and bam, it's gone. I had this navigation officer once. We were working to the southeast of the Bear Island in the Norway area. And I tell him, here you have to stick to the passage. But he deviated for half a mile. The trawl just snapped off. Bam! And it's gone. The sixth day of Rosioka's sail. Cargo holds are filled on two-thirds. A little bit to go. The catch size is not so bad. And there's a reason to be happy. But an unexpected thing happened. The only remaining trawl once again snagged a rock on the sea bottom. It completely ruined the selective mesh that allows smaller fish to escape the net. Without this mesh, fishing is illegal, which means this tour for Rosioki is over. Sure. Okay, that's enough. Let's get going. Homebound. Finita, we're going to Tribrica. The storm, needless to say, we need to hurry. Even if we spend 10 hours on repairing it, we still won't be able to set it. We are running out of time, so we are going to Tribrica port. You look out the window and think, my God, the ship might be rocking so hard at sea now. How are they doing? Yes, it's hard. When they have this men talk, we always listen. What's it about? What happened? Because they prefer not to talk about things. So I overhear something and then start asking little by little what happened. Everything's fine. Tell me what happened. Until he says. Hello? Hi. How are you? How's Vitya? Fine? And his grades in school? Good, good. I'm okay. Tomorrow I think we'll be in Tribrica. So I'll call you from a regular phone. The trawler is hurrying off to Tribrica, a small village on the Barents Sea coast. 
Out of the cargo hold onto the pier comes boxes with the fish. Several dozen tons of catch. It's time for the most exhausting part. Just sit and wait for a new trawl to be delivered and the vessel to go fishing again. The captain doesn't really know himself where his real life is. On land where his family is waiting for him, on here at sea where you have constant rocking and monotonous food, but also the special feeling of freedom and the excitement of fishing. Have you seen him, Murmansk? They've opened this monument to a waiting woman. So, I think waiting is also hard. It's better to ask wives, though. Waiting is also hard, I guess. But it's better to ask wives. We are the ones being waited for. We come back and it's a holiday. The best holiday is coming back home. Not New Year or May 1st, but coming back home. Two months till the end of the tour felt to the Botswain like eternity. But he's already hurrying back home in a quiet residential area of Murmansk. No matter how late the fisherman is coming home, his wife and children won't go to sleep till he opens the door and gives everybody a hug and a kiss. Hi. Hi, son. My dear son. How are you? Where's mom? Oh, Masha came. Masha, honey. You're here. Thanks. This is for you, Masha. Welcome home. Thank you. And where's mom? Mom's in the kitchen? Mom's in the kitchen. Here's mommy. Maxime, so tell me, how's your health? Good. How are you doing after the surgery? I'm fine. Fine? Why are you wearing glasses? Are you crazy? I was watching TV. So take them off now. Masha, how are your exams? Did they tell you the results yet? Yes, and? And nothing. Everything's good. We'll have a rest and go on a tour again. That's it. What? Give me a kiss. Boy, did I miss you. Deccan Pyotr Polenis came home completely run down and exhausted. But the tour was successful, and he finally has an opportunity to buy something nice for his wife. Yulia, walking on her husband's arm, is in a hurry to check all the shops in Murmansk to find a nice fur coat. Spring is a sales season for winter clothes, and windows showcase a plethora of riches. But the time is running out. The captain called two times already. Pyotr is expected on the trawler, and Yulia still hasn't made her choice. She's not being picky. She simply wants to postpone the moment of farewell a little bit longer. The saleswoman looks at her with understanding. In this city, every second person is somehow connected to the sea. I like it. Better than that one. Better than that one. And these two are also nice. Try undoing the top button. Before their families know it, fishermen are sailing again over the gray surface of the Kola Bay towards storms, rush jobs, and sleepless nights. Every trawl will be bringing joy or disappointment, and somebody will definitely wait for them on land. That's how it has always been and will always be in Murmansk, a city under the North Star. Normal, solid, manly work, real work, I know this work has to be done. Deep in my heart, being a captain makes me proud because I'm a captain. I won't be ashamed to tell my kids. Actually, my daughter has grown up, so to grandkids, that I worked in the fishing fleet. I sailed around the Bering Sea, Barren Sea. I sailed many seas. I won't be ashamed to say that. Мои 
Я все вахты отстаю на корабле. Вы за мной пришлите шлюпку моряки, Поднесите рюмку водки на весы.